need to blow my nose. It's not very professional, but <laughs> you don't want to see the results if I don't. <laughs> it's now time for me to introduce our speaker. When did you tell me you are ordained? October 2018? Uh, yeah, October 15th, 2018. Right before my birthday. Reverend David um, came to the Center of Enlightenment as a visitor, correct? Correct. And felt right at home right away. And he loved it so much here that he decided he want to, wanted to enter the ministry. And it was my pleasure to help him get ready for that interview and paperwork and all of it, because I felt he was a worthy candidate. And so he was ordained in October of 2018. 17. 17. Okay. <laughs> October 2017. And um, David has served Center of Enlightenment in many ways. He's had a couple of positions on the board. He now serves as our board president. Um, he just does so many things here and he's such a wonderful influence here. He's especially special to me because he's been my support person in some of my health challenges this year and I am forever grateful. Dave has got a wonderful talk prepared for us this morning. So please help me welcome Reverend David Shaw. Thank you, Reverend Carol. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, Reverend David. Um, I asked Reverend Carol if I could play I'm So Blessed this morning, as she said, and because I told her earlier in the week that I was gonna talk about gratitude or being grateful, she had already thought about including it in today's service. And as she said, uh, we use that at my ordination. Reverend Kathleen Hellenberg, who uh, conducts our choir, asked me to order the sheet music so the choir could sing it more easily and she'd have music to play to. The sheet music included the following introduction written by Karen Drucker, who wrote the music. Here's what she said. This chant was inspired by Reverend Mark Vieira of the North Hollywood Church of religious science. Mark gave a talk at the Asilomar conference about how he faced the impending death of a loved one by starting each day saying, I am so blessed, and continued saying it over and over during the course of this very hard time. I was so inspired and moved by his talk that I wanted to write a chant that I could sing every day as part of a spiritual practice. I have learned that taking time to give thanks for all that I have has made such a difference in my life, especially in those darker times when I can't feel it or see it. As Meister Eckhart said, if the only prayer you say in your whole life is thank you, that would suffice. I chose this song as part of my ordination ceremony because it speaks to me. Actually, the first time Reverend Marie Phillips played it, I bawled like a little baby. <laughs> I cry happy tears. If a piece of art moves me or a moment or an interaction, the love there, I react to. It fills me, and if it fills me enough, I cry. Uh, I cry at most Hallmark movies. Some of them are either written so poorly or acted so poorly that I don't cry, but the other 90%, yeah. Um, I am blessed. I was a full-blown alcoholic by the time I was 17, and eight years later, I was able to get into Brighton Hospital to learn how to be sober. And then I was able to have half of my stay paid for by their charitable foundation, which amounted to uh, was at least $2,500. It might have been four grand. I don't remember. That was a long time ago. Um, I'm also grateful to my parents for loaning me the other half of the money. 
They had to loan it because the Brighton counselors wouldn't let them give it to me. I had to pay it back to show that I valued the three week education I got about alcoholism at that facility. Uh, I'm grateful. I've been sober for 35 years. Thank you. It's still one tie at time. It's still only partly me. It's mostly spirit and others around me, but I wouldn't be here. Another thing I'm grateful for is the connection that I have with spirit. My guardian angel saved my life when I was two and a half years old. I was sitting on one end of a teeter-totter and my eight-year-old brother decided to jump on the other end. My family says I flew through the air like super baby. <laughs> According to them, I was fine that afternoon and evening. However, the next day, I told my mom that my shoulder hurt. After getting x-rays at the local emergency room, they showed that my collarbone was broken. A few years ago, I took an introductory media course with Reverend Elizabeth Brown. I had already taken Reverend Ken Novacheski's medium scorp twice in 12 months, so I was taking Reverend Elizabeth's just to see how she would teach it. During one of the early meditations, I asked my guardian angel how we met. She said, you remember the story about you flying through the air like super baby? I said, yes. And she said that she caught me and set me down on the ground. Otherwise, I would have died that day of a broken neck. But there was so much force involved that she couldn't prevent the broken collarbone. Gravity, after all, is a natural law. That was when she started talking with me. Since I have started attending this church, my guardian angel has saved my life in two traffic situations that I am aware of. Who knows how many other ones she saved me from. In both cases, I was not at fault. Someone else's faulty driving would have caused an accident that would have killed me and potentially others. I know this because both of the incidents, the other person was going at least 90 miles an hour. There have been a few periods in my life when I have chosen not to listen to spirit and my life was full of suffering and hardship during those times. Still, it helped me learn that I need to always take advantage of this gift and not only listen to spirit, but to comprehend what they are saying to me and to take appropriate actions. One way am I not allowed to take this gift is gambling. When the lottery was so huge, a billion dollars or whatever it was, people were saying, why don't you buy a ticket? Why don't you buy a ticket? Because I'd just be donating to the cause because they don't let me use my gift for that. That's okay. I get my needs met. And speaking of that, when we read the abundance principles each Sunday, we state that being in direct alignment with divine will can help us to achieve right thinking followed by right action. While I do practice that philosophy and guidance daily, as evidenced by listening to spirit and trying to comprehend and follow through in appropriate actions, a different part of the abundance principles is most important to me. In principle four, we state, I now make known my specific request to Mother, Father, God, my partner in co-creation, and I am grateful for all that I receive. Letting infinite intelligence know what we think we need in our lives is important, but we are humans, perfect spirit in flawed bodies. We don't really know what is best for us. Something we do know is that what we receive is what teaches us. What we receive is what helps us grow, whether physically, the food we eat, emotionally, the feelings that motivate us, mentally, the thoughts and lessons that improve our lives, and spiritually, the love and support we get from spirit. Being grateful is a choice to take ownership of everything that we are every minute of every day. Back to my ordination, Reverend Kathleen edited I am so blessed for the COE choir so that it reflected my life directly. What a gift. Someone sort of wrote a song for me only. So the song says, I am so grateful for all that I have. She added, 
I am so grateful for all that I am. I'm not perfect. I'm human. So there are things in my life that I wish were different. But with spirit, I work on taking ownership of everything I am, every minute of every day, even the things that I think need improving. And that applies to each of you. Take ownership of everything you are, every minute of every day. And one thing I like to talk about is I used to think that there was this path in life that we were supposed to take. We signed a contract before we incarnated and there's this path and all of our decisions. Well, this one wasn't right, but it went forward, but I zigged that way. And then I zigged that way. And sometimes I might've thought I took a step backward and then I zigged the other way. And mostly I'm going forward, but I'm not on that path. Well, I was wrong. I've learned since attending this church and through my teachers that Wherever I stepped, that's where I was supposed to be. Good, bad, indifferent. Who makes those judgments? Good, bad, indifferent. God doesn't. And the path we're on, it's the path we're on. It's how we get where we're supposed to be going. Um, the other thing that Reverend Kathleen added was, I am so grateful for those that I serve. People get through life with the help of others. I'm a minister, so part of my job is serving others. But I served others way before I became a minister. Every job that I worked, I was helping someone, whether it's in a fast food place or it's as IT manager, whatever it was, I was helping someone else. When I was a graphics person, we had clients that we dealt with. Every extended family function that I attended growing up, I was helping set up and take down, whether I was eight or whether I was 28. And there was, you know, 40, 50 people at least at those cousins, aunts and uncles, etc. We all serve each other and that is the greatest example of gratitude that I know. Um, they just told me to say something. Oh, well, it's gone. There were several parts to the sermon that Spirit said, okay, there's more, but they didn't tell me I was supposed to figure it out. And yeah, that ain't happening. <laughs> um, wait, I'm supposed to think of this thing. Nope, it's gone. Um, in conclusion, I have a quote from Alice Walker, the American novelist, poet, and activist. Thank you is the best prayer that anyone could say. I say that one a lot. Thank you expresses extreme gratitude, humility, and understanding. So in extreme gratitude, humility, and understanding, thank you for your time and thank you for your attention. And when I remember the other things I was supposed to talk about, I'll put it in the next sermon about gratitude. <laughs> this is gonna happen at least every few years.